friend. Welcome to Claiming Simplicity Podcast. I'm your host, Monica H. Baker. Are you feeling tired and overwhelmed as a mom working paycheck to paycheck, wanting to get out of debt and enjoy your family? I was too. And I realized if I was going to put God and family first, I had to stop spending all of my time at work. So I created a simplified life plan that allowed me to get out of debt, scale back my career, and still be able to live fruitfully but with more purpose and time than ever before, and I never look back. Inside this podcast, you will learn how to simplify your home and finances, learn simple routines, personal development, and connect your faith. I'm so grateful you're here. If you're ready to create a simplified life that you dreamed of, you are in the right place. Welcome back to Claiming Simplicity. I hope everyone here in the U.S. had an amazing Thanksgiving. For us, it was a long weekend full of food, family, and friends, and it was a really low-key, enjoyable weekend with some of our favorite people. Three of our grandkids also got dedicated in the church on Sunday, so that was just the cherry on top of it all. As I was reflecting on this year, I thought about how hard it was. It was hard to move away from a home that we had done so much to and had so many memories over the last 10 years. It was hard to live in a fish house for three months. It was hard to move to a home that needed a lot of work and still needs a lot more. It is hard writing a book when you have so many, many obligations and distractions. I just want to do everything. I want to do it all. It was hard trying to get so many outside projects done for all the animals that we've acquired over the last few months before the freezing temperatures we have now. I'm not sure about this winter farming when I'm having to haul pails of water from the shed to the barn because our outside pump froze up. So that was hard too. But when you put your trust in Jesus, there is such a peace through it all. Knowing that we are living where God wants us to be is so reassuring. Through it all, he just keeps blessing us and confirming that we are doing what we are called to do. What are you going through? I really believe that you can have a mindset of doom and gloom, or you can choose to have joy through all of it. It's a choice. There were a few days or maybe even a few weeks of being so extremely exhausted throughout this move this year that I had a bad attitude after moving. But when I made the choice to focus on so many, many positives, it changed my whole perspective. Our faith and having such a close relationship with the Holy Spirit has a lot to do with our joy along with the confirmation and reassurance from him that we are right where we need to be at this time. I want you to look back at this last year, this last five years and last 10 years. Look at how far you have come. Sometimes as homesteaders, we forget all that we have accomplished just because we have so many, many more projects to do and so many amazing things yet to learn. Right now, if you are the person dreaming of owning land someday, think about all the things you can learn while you're waiting. In the season of waiting, you can prepare and dream and save money. Be grateful for what you have and steward it well. Learn how to live a simple life now so that when you have the opportunity come up, you are ready. Here are seven ways to cultivate positivity during a tough season or a season of waiting. First, start a gratitude journal to regularly jot down things you're thankful for. It could be the warmth of the sun, the sound of the nature, or the support of your community or church. Two, incorporate positive affirmations into your daily routine. Remind yourself of the strengths and capabilities that reside within, fostering a mindset of abundance and possibility. Number three, practice mindful positivity by being aware of your thoughts. Redirect any negative thoughts and replace them with affirming and optimistic ones. Number four, celebrate the small wins. Acknowledge and celebrate small achievements, both in your homesteading journey and personal life. 
Recognizing these victories, however minor they are, contributes to a positive and uplifting atmosphere. Number five, visualize your success. Use the power of visualization to imagine your goals coming to fruition. Number six, surround yourself with positivity. Connect with like-minded individuals who share a positive mindset. Engage in conversations that uplift and inspire, whether it's in your local community or through virtual platforms. And seven, being adaptable and resilient. Challenges are a natural part of life, and a positive mindset can help navigate them with grace and determination. Positivity is not just a state of mind, but a way of life. By infusing these ideas into your daily routine, you can create a ripple effect of positivity. Have a great week!